Beyond the store, there was a blacksmith shop. It stood back from the road with a bare place in front of it. Inside, a big man in a leather apron made bellows puff, puff at red coals. He took a white hot iron out of the coals with tongs and swung a big hammer down on it. Wang! Dozens of sparks flew out tiny in the daylight. Beyond that bare place was the back of a building. Mary and Laura walked close to the side of the building. The ground was hard there. There was no more grass to walk on. In front of the building, another wide, dusty road crossed their road. And Mary and Laura stopped. They looked across the dust at the fronts of two more stores. And then they heard a confused noise of children's voices. Paul's road did not go any further. Come on, said Mary, low. She, but she stood still. It's the school where we hear the hollering. Pa said that we would hear it. Laura wanted to turn around and run all the way home. She and Mary went slowly walking out into the dust and turned towards the noise of the voices. They went padding along between two stores. They passed piles of boards and shingles. That must be the lumber yard where Paul got the boards for the new house. Then they saw the schoolhouse. It was out on the prairie beyond the end of the dusty road. A long path went toward it through the grass. Boys and girls were in front of it. Laura went along the path toward them and Mary came up behind her. All those girls and boys stopped their noise and looked. Laura kept on going nearer and nearer to all those eyes. And suddenly, without meaning to, she swung the dinner pail and called out, You all sounded just like a flock of prairie chickens. They were surprised. But they were not as much surprised as Laura. She was ashamed, too. Mary gasped. <gasps> Laura! Then a freckled boy with fire-colored hair yelled, Snipes yourselves! Snipes! Snipes! Long-legged Snipes! Snipes were birds with long legs. He was making fun of them. Laura wanted to sink down and hide her legs. Her dress was too short. It was much shorter than the town girls' dresses. So was Mary's. Before they came to Plum Creek, Ma had said that they were outgrowing those dresses and their bare legs did look long and spindly like Snipes' legs. All the boys were pointing and yelling, Snipes, Snipes! Then a red-headed girl began pushing those boys and saying, Shut up! You make too much noise. Shut up, Sandy! She said to the red-headed boy and he shut up. She came close to Laura and said, My name is Christy Kennedy, and that horrid boy is my brother Sandy, but he doesn't mean any harm. What's your name? Her red hair, her red hair was braided so tightly that the braids were stiff. Her eyes were dark blue, almost black, and her round cheeks were freckled. Her sunbonnet hung down her back. Is that your sister? She said, Those are my sisters. Some big girls were talking to Mary. The big one's Nettie, and the black-haired one's Cassie. And then there's Donald and me and Sandy. How many brothers and sisters have you? Two, Laura said. That's Mary, and Carrie's the baby. She has golden hair, too. And we have a bulldog named Jack, and we live on Plum Creek. Where do you live? Does your pa drive two bay horses with black manes and tails? Christy asked. Oh, yes, said Laura. They are Sam and David, our Christmas horses. Well, he comes by our house, so you came by it, too, said Christy. It's the house before you come to Beetle's store and post office. Before you get to the blacksmith shop. Miss Eva Beetle is our teacher. That's Nellie Olson. Nellie Olson was very pretty. Her yellow hair hung in long curls with two big blue ribbon bows on top. Her dress was thin white lawn with blue flowers all over it, and she wore shoes. She looked at Laura, and she looked at Mary, and she wrinkled up her nose. Huh! Country girls! Before anyone else could say anything, a bell rang. A young lady stood in the schoolhouse doorway, swinging the bell in her hand. All the boys and girls hurried by her into the schoolhouse. She was a beautiful young lady. Her brown hair was frizzed in bangs over her brown eyes and done up in thick braids behind. Buttons sparkled all down in front of her dress, and her skirts were drawn back tightly and fell down behind in big puffs and loops. Her face was sweet, and her smile was lovely. She laid her hand on Laura's shoulder, and she said, You're a new little girl, aren't you? 
Yes, ma'am, said Laura. Is this your sister? Teacher asked, smiling at Mary. Yes, ma'am, said Mary. Then come with me, said teacher, and I'll write your names in my book. They went with her the whole length of the schoolhouse and stepped up on the platform. The schoolhouse was made a room made of new boards. Its ceiling was underneath of shingles like the attic ceiling at their house. Long benches stood one behind the other down the middle of the room. They were made of planed boards. Each bench had a back and two shelves stuck out from the back over the bench behind. Only the front bench did not have any shelves in front of it and the last bench didn't have a back. There were just like my, my desks here. There were two glass windows on each side of the schoolhouse. They were wide open, and so was the door. The wind came in, and the sound of waving grasses and the smell of the sight of the endless prairie and the great light of the sky. Laura saw all of this while she was waiting. Laura saw all of this while she stood with Mary by the teacher's desk, and they told her their names and how old they were. She didn't move her head, but her eyes looked around. A water pail stood on the bench by the door and a boughten broom stood in one corner. On the wall behind teacher's desk, there was a smooth space of boards painted black. Under it was a little trough. Some kind of short white sticks lay in the trough and a block of wood with a big woolly bit of sheepskin pulled tightly around it. Laura wondered what those things were. What? What she just described was the blackboard and the blackboard tray and the chalk and the eraser. A chalkboard? A what? Shh. Mary showed teacher how much she could read and spell, but Laura looked at Ma's book and shook her head. She could not read. She wasn't even sure of all the letters. Well, you can begin at the beginning, Laura, said Mary, and Mary can study farther on. Have you a slate? They did not have a slate. I will lend you mine, teacher said, and you, you can't learn to write without a slate. A slate is like a tiny little chalkboard, like that one right there. Okay. She lifted up the top of her desk and took out the slate. The desk was made like a tall box with one side cut out for her knees. The top rose up on boughten hinges and under it was the place where she kept things. Her books were there and the ruler. Laura didn't know until later that the ruler was to punish anyone who fidgeted or whispered in school. Anyone who was so naughty had to walk up to the teacher's desk and hold out her hands while the teacher slapped it many times hard with the ruler. But Laura and Mary never whispered in school and they always tried not to fidget or wiggle. They sat side by side on a bench and studied. Mary rested her feet on the floor but Laura's dangled because she's so short. They held their book open on the board shelf in front of them, Laura studying at the front and Mary studying farther on. And the pages between were standing up. Laura was a whole class by herself because she was the only student who could not read. Whenever teacher had time, she called Laura to her desk and she helped her read letters. Just before dinner time on the first day, that's lunch, Laura was able to read C-A-T, cat. Suddenly, she remembered and said, P-A-T, pat. Laura was surprised, or the teacher was surprised, sorry. R-A-T, rat, said teacher. M-A-T, mat. And Laura was reading. She could read the whole first row in the speller. At noon, all the other children and the teacher went home to dinner. But Laura and Mary took their dinner pail and sat in the grass against the shady side of the empty schoolhouse. They couldn't go home for dinner because it was two and a half miles away. They ate their bread and butter and talked. I like school, Mary said. So do I, said Laura. Only it makes my legs tired. But I don't like that Nellie Olson that called us country girls. But we are country girls, said Mary. Yes, but she needn't wrinkle her nose, Laura said. <laughs> 